First thing. Then, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Put me on the spot. Remember it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's a good show. Roll call. Everybody's here. I'm like the last one. <laughs> First item on the agenda, nomination, election of chairperson and vice chairperson. So I'd like to nominate Rick again because he does <laughs> such a good job. And, and, <laughs> and she tries to get out of me. <laughs> and I don't want to do it. <laughs> Have we ever got any other nominations from the... Come on, you can speak up. I said it, man. Are you okay with that? Well, yeah, seeing that we're down a meeting a couple of times a year, it doesn't bother me, but I think, you know, everybody should have the delight of chairing this <laughs> wonderful committee. You do such a great job, though. So that's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting rewarded for your incredible Real. service. Okay. Um, hmm. Unless you have a serious <laughs> objection, then... But we won't make you do it. We won't. Yeah. We just want you to do it. As I recall, last year you made a promise. To me. <laughs> I don't think that ever got recorded. I don't remember a promise. <laughs> you know, I don't mind doing it. I just don't want to hog all our glory. That's that's it. Well, we're, we're, we're happy to have, have you in the, as the shining beacon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mark, like to no, I'm, I'm happy with I'm happy with Mandy's nomination. Right. Be ready next year, Rob. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Rick. Abstain. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So efficient. Nice, guys. <laughs> Approval of the minutes. And, uh, Do we need the vice chair, though? Is that yeah, possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need a vice chair. <laughs> Who's vice chair? Uh, yes, I mean, I dominate Mandy. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a great job. <laughs> It comes back to my chair. I second it. Anybody else? No? There you go. All in favor? Aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, I see. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, approval of the minutes. I'm entertaining a motion for approval of the minutes. Everybody looking over for May 2nd. A motion to approve. Okay. Motion to approve. Get a second. I'll second. There we go. Second for Mark. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Moving right along. Okay, we got a little presentation by the Exchange Club. Do we have the uh, speakers, the cards? Okay. Thank you. Ready to go. Thank you, Rick. You got your own order? That's fine. Thank you. Uh, Jim Kemp is my name. I am a member of the Exchange Club. Uh, but uh, I, I must uh, apologize, I'm not ready to uh, do a presentation regarding combo teas this evening. I just noticed, or just was notified of this meeting yesterday, and uh, I'm, I'm flat not, not ready. And I beg uh, a retry at this at your next meeting when I, when I am, have been notified in advance that it's coming up. Um, but also I would like to make sure that this is not an exchange club idea. Uh, Combo Tees and Jim Kemp are separate on this. I, I, I want to present this uh, Combo Tee idea uh, to the uh, golf committee mm -hmm. uh, a, a, as a, an idea from a, a member of the men's club, also a member of the exchange club, but a private citizen that has an idea that may be useful and beneficial and enjoyment for the local golf course and that's what I wanted to uh, discuss and, and present and I'd like to postpone that until the next meeting if that's possible. I think that can be arranged. Okay. I'll need a motion, a second, and a vote if that's acceptable for the committee. I have a motion that we ask Jim to come back at our next meeting to present. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 
Okay. Now let's hear from the exchange club on your issue. If I can give a really brief um, oral report on this. Okay. So this is something um, the committee looked at at its uh, last meeting when we met in May specific to the block reservation system that the city allows for within the golf course operating resolution. The city allows uh, local nonprofit groups who benefit the community in, in, in large part to um, request block reservations on, a, on an ongoing basis, separate from the tournament system that we have in place. Any nonprofit is afforded this opportunity as long as the work and the proceeds that they that they gather um, benefit the community of San Clemente. Um, so at the last meeting, the, the committee reviewed the Exchange Club uh, block reservation, which is at, in May was four tea times on Wednesdays at 9 a.m., and also looked at the 10 whistles request, which is a kind of a, a sub shoot of the men's club. Um, the committee, if you recall, um, voted and approved moving from four to three tea times for the exchange club based on the ongoing um, data of what, of what staff had, which was the, the exchange club was pretty consistently reserving around two, 2.7 tea times um, weekly. So based on that number, the committee recommended going down to three. Um, since that time, um, the Exchange Club has requested to go back to four tea times, and they're here this evening. I did have the, the pleasure to meet with them yesterday and get some more insight. They're here this evening with that request to the committee to be reconsidered um, for that fourth tea time, and um, they, they are willing to um, hear out the committee's feedback, but also might have some suggestions on how they can be more successful. Um, on staff's end, um, of course, tea times are hard to get. They're very hard to get no matter who you are. Um, and you know, the more we can provide for public access to tea times, the more we want to do that. Um, so the fourth tea time when it was released, and, and Mr. Kemp was always tremendous at releasing it 24 hours in advance, but we were just seeing a pretty consistent no-fill on that fourth tea time. Um, that said, um, and it wasn't always filled either, even when it was released back to the public. So that's where we were at, and here we are today um, with this bring back item to see if the committee would like to do anything differently. Um, I do also want to apprise the committee that um, the city council has, has requested to look at the block reservation for the exchange club as well, and that will be coming to the city council meeting in the near future. Um, but, I, but I do want to make sure the committee has the opportunity to talk about this um, and provide any other recommendations to council um, at that time also. Samantha, what did we agree on the tin whistle request? Um, it's twice a month for four tea times on Fridays, and I believe it was starting at 10 or 11 a.m. And there's no problem with that? With that, that I'd have to check in with the pro shop. I haven't heard anything from the 10 whistle group on that, and I've also heard nothing from the pro shop and um, the starter. Well, yeah, I believe it's starting next month from what I've heard. That would be why for nothing. <laughs> so are we ready to hear the exchange club's pitch? It looks like you're first on the list, James. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jim Kemp is my name. Um, a member of the exchange club, have been for 15 years, and uh, it's a, uh, a great organization, and we have enjoyed a tremendous relationship with the city, and thank them for the privilege of uh, being honored with this uh, recognition by having a, a block of tea times. Um, that is something that I worked on at the beginning when we first established this, just uh, as the COVID was, was happening and the city had gone to the new booking system. and. Uh, I organize the groups for the players in the exchange club, and I do that in a, in a very formal fashion, and it is, uh, it is always, uh, 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 I'll, I'll explain the process to you. I, uh, on Sunday afternoon, I send out a 
message to all of the people that are in the exchange club and we encourage them to invite uh, guests that might be member uh, in interested in being members of the club and that has been very useful in the last few months we've, we've joined had several new members join because of the opportunity to play with us in golf but also help the club support the community with the charity work that we do so I, I send out a, a message on Sunday I get a response back from the guys that would like to play and if they they would like to have a guest come in on Monday I ask uh, are there any further ones here's the list I have on Monday evening I, uh, I, I check and make sure again and then uh, late Monday night I formulate an email to notify the starter Vinny uh, Bonsino and uh, let him know the exchange club would like to uh, utilize this block these times specifically in the block of tea times and if we're not filling them all these are the ones that we release as under our MOU with the city and uh, when that, that's that's been the process, and I've since I've been doing this for several years, I've never had a response back from the starter saying, "No, you can't do that." This is I, I did have a, a correspondence uh, last week that said, "You only had three times, not four. This was the first correspondence I'd heard of our being knocked down to three times. Every week thereafter, or every week before that. I've always had this email out there saying we have 14 times. Here's the ones where, and I never got any feedback on that. That uh, gee, you guys don't have four anymore. So it was kind of a shock that uh, this uh, that the committee had decided this, and I uh, we we're kind of frankly don't understand the rationale for it. So uh, hopefully this evening we'll understand more why what the recommendations reasons are and. and uh, I uh, look forward to hearing that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Larry, you're up. Good evening, our late afternoon members of the Golf Committee. My name is Larry Reynolds. I'm a member of the Exchange Club. We're one of three service clubs that I'm aware of here in the city of San Clemente. We're probably maybe the least well-known of the three. But we have been chartered in the city of San Clemente since 1965. And we're one of 600 clubs throughout the country that come under the auspices of the National Exchange Club. Our vision is a strong America, safe communities, and unified people. Our mission is to inspire our community to become better places, a better place to live. Our values are family, community, and country. We support community organizations and local activities that benefit youth, promote pride in our country, honor our military and veterans and our first responders, and those that make our community better by providing services and assistance to others that are most in need. I've given you all uh, a handout that you should have a copy of, and there's a page entitled uh, our Contributions for the Year 23-24. Our fiscal year ends in June 30th every year, and this page shows our contributions that were given this past fiscal year, totaling just over 34,000, and they all go to local communities here in the community of San Clemente or just outside, like on Camp Pendleton, families, Marines, and that sort of thing. Behind that is another page that is a summary of our contributions going back to the year 2000. And it's more of a detailed breakdown to the kinds of organizations that we support within this community. And as you'll see, as of the end of this past fiscal year, we're at $574,000 that we have contributed since the year 2000 to these local community organizations. If we continue in the vein that we did last year, which we expect to do again this year, we're going to top the $700,000 uh, total since the year 2000 and we're very proud of the fact that that's the kind of organization we are. We like to support local organizations that do good things to make our community even better. So I'm just trying to give you a little education of who we are. Thank you. Thank you Larry. Bring back St. Patty's. Well, that was great. Alan. 
Hi, my name is Alan Daly. I am the current president of the Exchange Club. Uh, one of the important things for us is getting new members into our club. As you all know, it's very difficult for organizations like ours and the Rotary and so forth and so on. They're having difficult times maintaining their memberships and seeing declines in that. And one of the big things for us is our ability to have people come and join us out on the golf course, uh, get to know us, and in fact a lot of the new members that we've had in the last three to five years have been because of their ability to join us in our uh, Wednesday morning uh, golf meetings. It also creates goodwill within the community, as Larry previously said. Uh, we're always very supportive of the people in the pro shop. Uh, every Christmas when they have their, you know, help the pro shop people, we're always the first ones to be there to help support these people, and we appreciate all the hard work that they do. Um, it's not unusual for cities to do this for nonprofit organizations and, you know, grant block tea times for various groups. It's not an unusual thing at all. Um, we feel that this has been a, a a win-win for everybody in the community, for the club, for the golf course, uh, for everybody. And the only last thing I'd like to say, is, Samantha, I don't know if, if one of the big things for us, it's like when the men's club plays and we ask our members for, to come and support, you know, to use the tee times during that one week, during the month, a lot of the members will not play because of the very, very slow play in the men's club. And I don't know if that's something that has been factored into this 2.7 uh, uh, tee times per, per week or whatever it is. Um, and we may want to take a look at that, but I just want to thank the, the committee for hearing us out. And we hope that we can resolve this in a win-win fashion and, and everybody can walk away from this feeling good about it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brown, I guess you bet and clean up. Yeah. Of course, I wasn't standing up at me for 50 years or whatever it is. I don't know. Uh, Don Brown, uh, sits the Senate Committee, uh, sat here many times on the Planning Commission for 12 years. Well, first of all sorts of work you guys do, and thank you for your time sitting up there as I used to do. You've now heard how we manage our tea times. Jim has a very good type process. So by Tuesday afternoon, evening, I know what my tea time is and what my foursome is by name. And that's the way he runs it. So here we are. We're ready to go. So by Wednesday morning, when we show up, it's 9, 9 or 9, etc. You know when to be there, when to get there and when to execute. So we have rules, and the rules are designed for this group to ex ex exercise play throughout the course and not hold anybody up. We have lift clean in place, we have certain rules that accelerates play and makes it efficient. And you, you can play traditional all the way down, so you can post your score, or you can take some of these combo ideas you can and expedite, so we do not hold up the course with our three or four groups. And we, those rules have, been, have evolved over the years specifically to make sure that we don't impact the course and those behind us. And so, so now you know how we run it. Uh, we got these tee times by written request. It came to this committee uh, three or four years ago in writing. You guys approved it. It went on the city council, and they also approved it. And we, we locked these times in at 9, 9 on Before that, we had times later on in the afternoon. We've had tea times for over 35 years. We, like I said, we contributed to the community $34,000 last year. We're inclusive. Members can bring guests at any time. Half those people play with us. We had some today. And we, they'll join us. They'll, they were asked to come back. We've heard some individuals are complaining about our times. We would love to have them come join us if they'd like to. And so we're, we hope to be very inclusive about that. We hope that you'll look at this as a positive win-win for a community, a, a group that contributes to the community. Uh, we ask for your support and continuing our efforts here that has been approved. We appreciate Samantha's effort of reaching out. We didn't even know about this meeting until yesterday. We were not officially informed of this meeting in writing or 
telephone me or email or any other way until just yesterday afternoon. We, I have arranged a meeting with the mayor and we will be meeting with him next week on this subject. So we really want to thank you and we appreciate it and we hope you have your support going forward for our tea times. So thank you for your time. Um, discussion with the committee? I mean, it sounds like the decision was made last week based on the data that was provided that there was an unused tea time on average. Now, whether that data is a little skewed based on you know, the men's club, I'm not sure. We'd have to, to see. But, you know, in general, are we finding that you're filling all four times every time? Or are you giving one back? How often, Jim, is that, are you, is that happening? Um, it is true that uh, we have not filled all four tea times every week. Our trend is to filling them, and actually I'm turning away some guys saying that we don't have room for the 16th, so because our membership has been growing. So I, our trend is definitely uh, to make sure we do fill the, the four tea times and at some point in time come back and ask if we could have another place. But uh, we, are, uh, we are currently kind of on that balance. The, 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 uh, the membership, when, when our tea times were posted, they were to follow the men's club on Wednesdays that the men's club had a tournament. And the men's club tournaments generally will fill up to uh, uh, noon or 11.30 or thereabouts and then the exchange club will come in after that. Now, you all have played on the men's club. You know that on tournament days, at least on Wednesdays, it's very slow. And it's not unusual to have a five and a half hour round, which is not really exciting for a lot of guys that, that are at the end of the row waiting to finish the game before the sun goes down. So it taints the numbers of how many times, and, and so on, on that first Wednesday, that be sometimes I only have one group that'll right. want to suffer through the, the round there, you know. So uh, I don't uh, I don't know what we can do about that, but uh, that's a I think that does shape the numbers that uh, uh, what would be the average yeah. use of the times. Right. But I, I think that my my question I don't think that the city loses revenue from. This anyway, when when we are when we relinquish the times, there's time for them to be posted, and for the public to reserve those times. We don't do anything that uh, violates the MOU that said we we were mandated to turn in the times 24 hours ahead of time, or the exchange club is obliged to pay those green fees, and we have not yet been notified ever that we have to pay green fees because. We didn't show up at the tea times we said we'd be there. So I think that there's not been any violations whatsoever in the MOU in our maintenance of that uh, agreement with uh, notifying the, the starter. So is 24 hours the, uh, the, the, the issue? Is, is that the, uh, the reason that they're, they're, uh, they're not filled out? Or, or is, is there... Can I, can I ask a yes. question, Jeff? Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. Yes, thank you. I'm, I'm a little deaf. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Um, are you saying that on the days when it's the men's club, that's when you're not filling the four? The, yes. The, the, are, are you filling them on the other three, the other weeks? The trend is yes, we are, and 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 that's where uh, the, the last two weeks is uh, if we needed fourteen times, you know, we uh, so. And I, like I said, I have new excited people wanting to join the club, and we want to see them because it, it helps us build a, a better club for the city. And, and uh, so it's a it's a sales tool for us, frankly. That, uh, that well, please join the club. There's a benefit. The city has been nice to grant us this, uh, and and we we want to value that and have the people realize that that's a, a benefit of joining this service club. And so uh, on the days when you're not filling the tea times, which is after the men's club, yes, then you don't need four tea times on that day because you're not filling them. You're right. You're so right. maybe we recommend that you cut down on that side because you can't fill those tea times 
I, I think that would, be, uh, that would be an entirely reasonable uh, uh, idea to uh, say, okay, on the days that the men's club plays, uh, instead of having four tea times and whatever, two or uh, something like that, we uh, we would be happy with. Okay, so uh, so your intent this evening, uh, pitching this, is just to resecure the one time that was taken away and yes, go please. back to four. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Okay. On the other three. On the other three. Yeah. 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 Except for the one three days. days. Yeah. I mean the the. The discussion we had last meeting, right, was tea times were in uh, tough supply, right? And there was a report that they weren't getting filled. I played with you guys a number of times and had a great time uh, filling in groups. So the report that it wasn't getting filled was consistent with my experience of being able to come play. And I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. Playing with, with the exchange club is always, to me, the, the best groups I play with are the exchange club Thank groups. You. Um, so, that was the background, I think, of of the decision earlier. But if you know, in fact, they're getting used, I'm yeah. definitely supportive of the exchange of keeping the times that are going to use. Because um, I think it's it's um, you want the people who are giving most back to the city to be able to access the city's resources. So I agree, Robert. Did you have I, I, I agree. What, what are the tea times? At 9 o'clock, 9.09, 9.18, 9 9.27. Okay. I mean, it sounds reasonable to me that, that you go back to four, and if you're willing to give up one or two on those days for that. I, I believe that would be entirely satisfactory for us. Yep. Yeah. Ma'am? Uh, only other thing I would say is I, I don't know if we want to explore. Uh, like a 48 hour notice instead of 24. I don't know how hard that is on you if you have to move everything forward one one day. Um, just so that, that made the pro shop feel like they had more time to fill it or the public feel like there was more opportunity. I don't, I don't the standard know. notice right now is 24. 24 is pretty standard well, right now. But, yeah. And I would like to say with the ladies club, we, give, we play on a Tuesday morning and we tell the pro shop on a Sunday if we have any openings. So they have two days, because it's, a, cause it's yeah. a block. It's not just a mm -hmm. regular True. foursome. Mm -hmm. So if you could give the 48-hour notice, if you can't fill the tea times, that gets them a, a, a much better opportunity to fill those tea times. Could, could we uh, find a middle, maybe 36 hours? <laughs> <laughs> it just, that falls in the middle of the night sometimes. <laughs> yeah, they won't be there when you say that. So <laughs> I'm just coming up with a way that might be easier for the public to swallow in the area. It's more 48 hours in advance so that there's plenty of time for someone to pick that up. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to. It is, a, it is a little bit longer, but it's because you have the block. Mm -hmm. You're not just calling yeah. in. And no, that's, that's right. But yeah. I, and, and it's not a, um, it's a list of people that are, we know are interested in playing. So we, it's a very. So you know about like Sunday night. Well, from a practical perspective, like Monday, Monday. Mon Sunday night, yeah. Monday, well, first thing Monday morning would be, you know, sort of. Yeah, I, can, I, I mean, physically I can do that. Yes. I, I don't know if it's how much it messes up your system. It's not possible at all. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. What, what about what if we stayed with where we're at and then you guys look at the data and if the data within three or four months says that there's a problem and you need to go to a, a 48 hour or something like that at that point we can make an adjustment but the reason we came up with this was there was data saying that the times weren't being filled so we have data from up to the last meeting but do, we know how much, but do we know how much of that is because of the men's club and the fact that, like in the men's club, a lot of times there will only be one, maybe two tea times that even get you, that gets used. Yeah, we can collect that over the next three or four months and knock out those weeks. Yeah. Especially if we've already knocked down those days. Uh, actually, yeah. to, anyways. there is another facet to the, when we follow the men's club, uh, actually a lot of the guys that are in the exchange club are also members of the men's club and we will we, we join the men's club tournament and so we're really not playing the exchange club and that creates the excess uh, there because we're playing uh, actually the men's club opens their window of uh, uh, opportunity for signups and says okay you guys already have a group put them together we can play with the men's club and whatever so it uh, it makes it a little fuzzy there, exactly who's 
tea times are being used on men's club days. So you even need tea times on men's club days? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Champ. Yeah. Yeah. We do. All right. Probably yeah. not sure what percentage of it. Yeah. I think we could, I mean, I, I would say that we could go with even one tea time on, on the men's club Wednesday. Mm -hmm. We could knock it down to one tea time because we yeah. just don't get that. Yeah, we just learn to play in the group or they're not interested in right. stuck in the back. Yeah, I would support that and then take a look at how the day, you know, like I said, look over, let's see how the next quarter goes and maybe we can see for our next meeting how many of the tea times have been have to be released versus how many are already full for the non men's club days. So does somebody want to make a motion so we can get this on the books? Yeah. So I'll make a motion to restore the fourth tea time for the exchange club on Wednesday mornings with um, and with some analysis to be done for the next meeting to determine um, if we're going to continue with that. And the provision that there's one tea time on the... And sorry, yeah, with the provision that there's one tea time on the men's club tournament Wednesdays. Did you get all that? <laughs> Need a second. I'll second that. I'll <laughs> second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have to recuse myself because I was a member of the exchange club in the early 80s. <laughs> so. A small club. We have a golf tournament on the 14th of October at the Muni. It's a Monday, federal holiday. And that's where our big fundraiser, and we invite you all to join us and play golf with us. Thank you. Thank you. Semper Fi. Number five, number five. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, new business. What do we know about the driving range? Eric, now, here's. This is, um, I'm going to actually invite um, Amir uh, from engineering. Um, this is the errant ball netting extension on the driving range. It's a project we've been talking about for too long, uh, but, but at least two years, I think. Um, Jordan's worked really hard on getting the netting project going, and it's been delayed for a variety of reasons. Um, but we are here today. Um, engineering is going to take over the mic because this is in their wheelhouse of um, projects. Essentially, what we wanted to do today is invite the public to come out and give their feedback. Anytime we extend a net or a fence, we want to make sure that we're notifying our, our neighbors in case there's any implications um, from individuals' views or things like that that could impact them as an unintended consequence of our actions. So um, this meeting has been publicly noticed within a 300-foot radius of the golf course. Um, we do not have any members of the public present, and I have not. Staff have not received any communication um, from any neighborhood uh, neighbors, one way or the other, on the matter. So, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Amir to uh, give us the information, and we're looking um, for a recommendation from the committee to then forward to the city council to continue forward the project, if that's the will of the committee. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Amir al for I'm with Public Works uh, Engineer Section. And as uh, uh, Sam indicated, we are basically here to uh, get consideration of uh, driver wrench, uh, around ball uh, netting extension from the committee. Uh, currently, the ball, uh, uh, around ball netting that we have around the uh, uh, driver wrench is uh, uh, on the westerly side of uh, the, the range is uh, about 30 feet uh, height and on the southerly side of the the range is about 60 feet. Uh, the 60 feet was uh, basically extended in 2009 and on the uh, easterly side is uh, remains to be about 30 feet high. Uh, and. Uh, the total budget that we have for the project is uh, $300,000, uh, and so that's why we think that this money we can only probably uh, uh, extend the height of the westerly um, ball netting from the 30 to 70, 70 feet high. So, um, and also we, as uh, maybe Sam indicated, we have 
Uh, we are planning to ask for a CEQA uh, recommendation and CEQA processing. Uh, we have hired a, a professional uh, doing the analysis for us and, and they uh, indicated that the project uh, is qualified for categorical exemption uh, and uh, that is also as in, um, included uh, attached to the staff report. So uh, uh, with that, uh, if you have any questions, we would like to answer. Is, I have a question. Is it 30 feet now and it's going to 70, so you're adding 40? Is, is that how it works? Or? Correct. Correct. Okay. So right now it's 30 through 150 yards or so? Uh, I believe it's... And then it comes, then it comes higher? It, yeah, we, we have uh, we have a measurement of uh, 550, but I, I believe uh, I just measured that it's, it's longer than 550 linear feet on the westerly side. Um, so I, I would say about uh, 552, uh, I think about 650, uh, the, the netting on the westerly side, that's what it is. Is it going to be increased in every part of the westerly side or just in the short part? I guess the, the, the question I'm getting at is, are we going to protect the 13? That's what I was thinking when you because said that. Because that is the most dangerous part of the golf course. Do you so know the third G in here? Or? No, for sure. Okay. So, on the, the, deep, end so the, the deep end on the west side, the so third T is right there. And in the afternoons, when those under 30 <laughs> arrive at the golf course, mm -hmm. particularly the high school golf players, yeah. they hit big over the net there right at people on the third T. Well, then we, we so this is sure. not for that portion of the net. So this um, is for the short per portion. That that's, is. that's correct. That's probably all we have funding for at this point, um, which is also a priority. So the golf committee tonight could say, yes, we want to do this. This is important, but we'd also like to make a recommendation to the city council to immediately pursue additional netting along the third tee, you could, you could go that route. I don't know what the answer is, because it's, it's already high there. Yeah. But, it, I mean, it, well, it's... It'd be higher, because... I, you know. I, can, I can share, because you brought it up, that the golf course architect who's working on our master plan is highly aware of that area, and he is, he's reviewing that as part of his recommendations. Okay. So... Uh, my, my question is, does this interfere with the master plan, or is this in conjunction with this is in conjunction. If anything, it's going to complement it. It's, this is going, this was going to come out of the master plan regardless. Right. Um, so this is just going to check that box sooner and even ahead of adoption. So um, but the third T would be something we'll, we will have to include into the master plan. That's quite a jump. Thirty feet to seventy feet. That should keep balls from going into the sixth fairway. Right. right. At about one hundred and fifty yards, which is, is where they, which is where they all are. Right, they're, yeah. they're in two places. They're right there, where you're hitting your second shot at the six, which is yes. a danger. Yes. And they're also on the third tee, which yeah. is a danger. Like those, it'll it'll help one of the two issues. Yes. Right. Yeah. I, I, in my experience, there are more balls that go over to the sixth fairway, but there are quite a few that do go into that. So I would like to make a motion that this plan go forward but with a recommendation to look at errant balls going toward the further down the net on the third tee box. So I have a question on this report, this looking at the um, the subject consideration of driving range, this doesn't clearly say my at least unless I'm missing it, that it's not the entire west side of the fence. So I think that needs to be clearly articulated here that it's only the fence is X number of what? The short part. 650 yeah. feet long, 600 feet long. So it's about, I suppose, 230 yards. So, yeah. so let's say it's 660 feet long, give or take. Uh, it only uses, it only does the first 400 feet of that, right? I don't see it, unless it's in here and I'm missing it, I don't see it talking about that because I think that's a little bit, that's something to take into consideration. And did you say how tall, how tall the fence is on that? at the, the last, say, 100 feet or 200 feet of that west side, do you know? I, I'm not very certain, but uh, I thought generally the westerly side is about 30 feet old. Yeah. I think it's it goes up. 70 it goes 30 and then it goes up at one point. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. 
So we're only looking to replace the, the part that's low. Um, yeah, what, what we found through this historical um, adventure is the netting has been raised at different periods of time and in very random spaces, unevenly. So. Yeah. Can we check with Dan? Is it Dan Conway? Yes, uh, Andy Staples is our architect. Okay. Yeah. Can we check with him to see what kind of a solution he could come up with? Because I hate to raise the net and have him come down and do something else. That... Absolutely. I, I I met with him about a month ago, and he he pointed it out without me even prompting him. Good. Um, but I will make sure that he's aware of this conversation this evening as well. Yeah, we wouldn't want to spend the money on on that, and then two years from now, a year from now, it's, the range is completely reconfigured. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Robert made a motion. Anybody want to second that? To look further Can we be reminded of what that motion <laughs> was? Yeah. The motion is to um, go forward with the planned extension of the net, and at the same time recommend to the uh, city council to or. Yeah. So you can move the staff recommendation yes. and also. Um, recommend that the council prioritize um, a further review of the whole three, um, the netting along whole three of the driving range. So, so the motion would be to go forward with the plan to extend, as you described, with a recommendation to the city council to look at the uh, implications of raising the net to prevent balls going into the third tee box. Protecting the third tee. Protecting the third tee. All right. I'll second that. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Um, oh, did everybody do their homework for developing a golf course committee work plan and are ready to turn it in tonight? I didn't think so. And I haven't either. So let's be working on that sometime. Maybe get it to Samantha? Yeah, if you, if you want to do a motion and a second and a vote on um, if each committee member wants to provide me with their list of um, wants, we can host another meeting. I ha we can do another special meeting next month ahead of our November meeting. We do need to get work plans into council um, in October. Unless you want to discuss this on the dais tonight, if, if you all have a lot, a few, I don't know. I don't know the temperature of the committee. Being, being new, I'd like committee. to understand exactly what the process is and uh, what the responsibilities are. So if I can answer that question, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Um, the work plan is a document that the city council requires of every commission and committee. And the intention, uh, they're set by fiscal year. So July 1 of every year, we're going to look at establishing a new work plan. Um, the intention is to make sure that the items the committee is working on are priorities of the city council. Um, in the past, we've seen commissions and committees um, really venture away from what's even feasible for the city to accomplish. So the work plan is, a, is really a tool um, to communicate back and forth with the council of what this committee is working on or any other body. Um, Every work plan goes in front of the city council for final approval. Council has the authority to say, we don't want them to work on that. We want to, we want to see them do this. Um, we don't get too much guidance ahead of work plan preparation, but that is why you see um, staff's recommendations. And, and staff's recommendations are always a derivative of the budget and what's approved in the budget. Um, that's the other element to the work plan is we don't want to start looking at projects that there's no funding for. Because again, we're wasting the commi committee's time and then staff resources as well. Um, I've seen this go about uh, several different ways. Um, the golf committee, I will commend committees past that you guys have a very succinct work plan. It's very achievable. Um, it's not a lot of fluff. It is for the betterment of the golf course and it's hyper focused on results. And I think that is the epitome of what we want a work plan to be. Um, I think part of your work plan needs to be uh, whether or not the committee wants to reestablish the green subcommittee and the house subcommittee. 
and the Finance Subcommittee. Those are all things that should be included in the work plan. You also, of course, want to be involved in the master plan process. You want to be able to review the fees for the golf course, and you want to be involved in any input on budgeting and um, capital project uh, prioritization. So those are things that come off the top of my head, working closely with the group and, and golf course staff. Um, other than that, at this point, there's not a lot of capital projects approved for the golf course this fiscal year um, because we are waiting for the master plan to land. The plan and intention is to, um, once the master plan lands, we'll go back for, for a budget review to see where we can fund things. So that's the intention of the work plan, um, long-winded, but hopefully that helps you gauge it. Mm -hmm. um, I, as I've said, the commissions or committees have gone a couple different ways. Um, if a commission or committee can get on the same page in one single night and you can go down the line and say, I don't have projects or these are my recommendations, you can vote on project work plan items one by one. Um, or you can uh, elect to send staff, send myself, the things that each of you individually want, I will compile a list and bring it back to the committee as a whole for a future vote. Okay, thank you. That's very helpful. Do we have an ETA on this uh, arrival of the master plan? We're going to do some public workshops. Um, you'll see them come late September, early October, most likely, on a couple of different course layouts. I don't want to spoil anything for my future report <laughs> later on in the agenda. Is there a work plan from the last? fiscal year that we could use the starting point? Yeah, I can tell you it was the master plan, um, reviewing course fees, um, looking at the driving range netting, and then establishing the greens and house subcommittee. Okay. Um, that, and then I think we also looked at uh, prioritizing projects, which we would do once, once a year, essentially ahead of the budget. Um, the other thing that I want the golf committee to get involved in, and this is in our operating resolution, is to look at these standing block reservations, be it the exchange club or the men's club, that should be looked at annually by the committee. I say we provide them to staff at a, I don't think we have them all right now, do you? I mean, no. Yeah. No, but I think the rest of the committee will get a better understanding once you go through our subcommittee report. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> I can think of a couple things already that were on there. Yeah. So we'll probably follow the, what you said about providing those to staff to compile. Okay. And then we'll get together and um, confirm. Does that work for everybody? So as an example, uh, I've noticed that the dividers uh, and, and in the driving range are broken and just old and worn out. Is that an example of one of the things that would be in a uh, maybe is that? That was a little challenging because that actually goes into the Dave Cook contract. Um, there's a way we can create a work plan item out of that without hitting a budget expense. You, you could put that under the guise of something like um, review our contracts with our, our operators on the course to ensure compliance. Um, and that could be something the House Subcommittee does. And then you can dive into it that way. Okay, that's that makes sense. I like that. Thank you. So do we need to make a motion for that, to provide those to staff? Yeah, that would be great. And then um, we, Debbie and I will work on a, a special meeting date offline okay. with all of you and call that special meeting. Okay, so I'll, I'll make the motion for the committee members to provide their work plan items to staff to compile, and that we will then reconvene a special meeting to review and finalize. Would you like those sent to you, Sam? Yes, please. Okay. So we're ready. I need a second. I'll second you. All in favor? Aye. 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 And, and these are, uh, there's an example uh, a sample form, I guess I say, yes. Annual work plan? Yeah, you don't need to fill the form out. That would be my job or Debbie's job. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll put that together. I will um, circulate last year's work plan just for your edification. 
Okay. okay. So you want us to individually send them to you? Yeah, you can just send me a bulleted list if you want to have just a really brief description. If okay. it's not abundantly obvious to me, um, okay. that would be very helpful. Okay, got it. That's excellent. It's got, there's a kind of form. Yes, that gives me an idea. That's helpful. Yes. Uh, all right, we got to take it up a notch or we'll be here like the council. Well, we won't regret having confused. <laughs> no, I'm slowing it down. Future golf course committee meeting times. Oh, wow. Who came up with this? So this is a um, an item that the committee, any commissioner committee has the opportunity to look at um, their meeting times, um, and we can, uh, we can recommend adoption of a resolution. Um, historically, these meetings have been at 6 p.m., um, I, I know that sometimes that can feel later in the evening for some folks, so this is an opportunity to say, hey, we really like the 5 p.m. meeting time, or we want to meet at 4 p.m. There are committees that meet at 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5, 6. Um, I want to make sure that as we have a, um, we have a new committee member, and, and Mark has been here for about a year now, we have the opportunity to make sure that 6 is still the time. Okay, that's great, but if you want to adjust it now, you can talk about that and do so. I do know that five o'clock, from what Rick and I learned, is not great for for Jordan. For Jordan. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, that'd be tough to want to make sure he's able to be part of this because it's important. Um, I don't know, four o'clock's better, but then he runs into five when he hit. But you know, and four o'clock's honestly a little tricky for me sometimes work wise. It just depends what's going on. But I don't want to be. I can always work around it. I don't have a time element problem. You guys. No, I like the five o'clock time because it's a nice time, but, Robert, but it's good to have Jordan. Five yeah. o'clock is fine with me. I, I like five. I don't have, have a preference either way, but um, would like to make it accessible for Jordan. Yeah. Right? yeah. So if that's earlier, that's fine. It's I, I think we'd have to double check. Can we? Why don't we go ahead and um, we can take no action tonight. We'll table it for the next meeting. Yeah. Um, I, I'll still Which leave will be at what time? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be, well, we can, and we can bring it back at the special meeting that we'll be hosting with the work plan, if, if, and then we can find out from Jordan ahead of that. Yeah. So Remember, remember it's, only, it's only one one night every three months. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, yeah, 5 yeah. o'clock, I can, I can do 5 o'clock, but I just want to make sure it doesn't conflict. Yeah, to, to let's talk to Jordan, just confirm. So can I get a motion and a vote to um, take no action this evening and have staff bring it back at a later meeting? Are oh. you going to talk to Jordan? Or talk, who's, talk, who's going to Ray, talk? Randy and I can connect oh. with him on yeah, it, too. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, I'll move to defer the decision to the next meeting. Okay. Second. Oh. All right. <laughs> Who is that a second? Robert. Robert. Robert okay. second. Robert. There you go. Sorry. Very enthusiastic committee here. Okay. And the vote. Green subcommittee, here we go. Let's run over these things. You thought the third quarter third. report and staff oh, communication still. Sorry, you really are. He's super excited about this. I was that close. <laughs> He's really excited. Yeah. We got a ways to go for the Oh Any questions on item 7A? Uh, I, 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 missed it. I don't think we, I don't no. think we received it. No, we and I guess I'll ask for. Usually Jordan presents it. Yeah, I don't see it in the report. Okay. Also, we talked about maybe the quarterly financials last time coming with the activity report. Yeah, and that I'm going to have a a very a much better comprehensive financial overview. We, we were able to make some recent changes within the golf fund that I think are a really positive thing, but I don't want to share that until I have confirmation. Um, I will certainly have that by November 1st, um, but we, we've made some tremendous progress on our loan payoff. Um, and I don't want to go beyond that at this point. So um, I will have that at the next meeting. Um, I think the activity report is a normal yeah. meeting. How many rounds have been played? It is. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it our intention to have it should the be not sure why it's the to come with that? Yeah, we, we can include those in That'd there. That would be great. I think, 
Yeah. Are you looking yeah, at what are you looking to have in the quarterly financials? Because right, the the report usually has. I I've think, seen the sort of act budget to actuals for the quarter today. I know obviously okay. it's like. Um, I was thinking oh, the, the wow. things that have been shared before. Okay. Are, um, yeah, we can include but that just in come this on a regular report. basis. Sure. Yeah. You bet. That way, Ben and I can have something to talk about. So, mm -hmm. so you know, maybe, yeah. I just thought. Um, staff communications. I, I did want to make sure everybody um, saw Mr. Randy Little over here in place of Jordan Gilmar this evening. Randy's the maintenance manager overseeing the maintenance of the golf course. Um, I would like to commend him for his really tremendous leadership over the golf course. He's done a really fantastic job of um, bringing up morale um, within that team and um, sharing some of the knowledge he has as a, as a lifelong maintenance manager um, for lots of different cities. So I think Jordan has appreciated his leadership and guidance. Um, I also I, I want to make sure the committee is aware that we did have a pretty significant um, pipe break yeah. in our pump room. Um, Randy's coordination with the utilities department was impeccable, um, and our utility staff really became heroes that day for us as they came in very quickly, helped us clean it up, and are making repairs. So, Randy, do you want to provide an update on that project? Uh, we uh, had the JPIA, our insurance carrier for the city, with, along with our risk manager out today to the pump house. They're going to be, they'll replace everything that got damaged by the water except the actual device that broke that caused the flood. But it blew out the entire 480 volt cabinet, two VFDs. I could baffle you with a bunch of acronyms, but the bottom line is it's probably a hundred to hundred fifty thousand dollars and insurance is going to pick up the tab on that, at least that's the way it sounded today. But the utilities division have been phenomenal. They've gone out and pulled things out of their pump stations that were on standby to get the golf course up and running. It was amazing, the work they did. You couldn't, couldn't tell you how appreciative we are of that. Um, saved Jordan a lot of grief. We saved the roughs by doing it that way as well. Um, so Jordan's coming in at 8 o'clock every night, punches a button, and goes back home and the course waters. The work should have that rectified by Friday and have it back totally automated. Thank you. How many, sorry, press the button from home. <laughs> How many of the uh, three pumps are, are they all three running now? No, we've only got one running now. We've put external slow starts on the other two motors, which doesn't draw so much voltage when they fire up and it relieves the system a little bit, and so those should be up tomorrow, if I understand correctly. Okay, cool. So we'll get back to the 1,200 gallons? Yes. Awesome. Yes. The only other recommendation, if there's no other questions on that end, um, and Randy, did you have anything else you wanted to give an update on? No, that was it. Um, I wanted to give the committee an update on our Notify um, software system. We haven't met since that's been implemented. So as you know, we, we implemented a virtual um, booking assistant. And we went live with that on June 13th. Um, we have seen a total of uh, 1,500 rounds booked from that system that would have gone unbooked. Um, and that equates to uh, about $78,000 in, in green fees that we're now recouping. So um, that is a phenomenal number. That is something that even the software company has said, you guys are one in a million. Um, so I, I do hope that that is a, a, another tool for our users and our golfers to gain access to the golf course. Um, we're seeing tee times get booked up um, almost instantaneously with that notification system. So um, I know some, some folks have been frustrated, but I know the majority is that it's helpful and it's successful. So I am, of course, always wanting to hear feedback um, on how we can do better, and hopefully this is a tool that's proving itself to be worthwhile. Last couple of weeks I got skunked and um, I got notified. <coughs> yeah, I, I've used it successfully. Yeah. I've used it as well. It works great. It's very simple. You just gotta be quick. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I want to do with that same uh, I, I uh, used it a bunch of times while stopping tea times. And mm -hmm. there is a there is a decent delay you might lose it, right? 
but um, it's, it's very cool. Yeah, they randomize it, so it's not a guarantee that you're going to get it immediately. Um, but the, the software, it's it's $5,000 a year, and we've already recouped that cost. We actually recouped that cost within the first seven days okay, of operating. Great. So, a little worthwhile. That's all I have. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. We gotta get some establishment of the subcommittees and appointment. We gotta get Robert on something. Uh, oh, Robert, I'd like you to join the House Committee. There you go. I'll volunteer for the House Committee. Thank you. House Subcommittee. House Subcommittee. And Ben, you want to stay on the Greens? I want to. Well, be someone's got to type this up. So. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Unless you want to, right? <laughs> no, I'll stay on. On the green. No, Does someone want to do finance with Mark? I mean, if Robert, you want to jump in and get that happen. side of it? Um, it's up to you. I'll be glad to help you. I'm sure that uh, my pleasure. We don't have a background in finance, but I know what dollars are. <laughs> well, don't worry, Mark. We haven't done much yet, so we'll have to pay the way. Okay. Yes. I'd, I'd be glad to. If you okay. Great. Yeah, I'd be happy to give that up to you. If you get get some more involvement, see a different side of things. Like, and then share you, it with us. You got all that head in hand of yours. I think so. Oh good. Yeah. I think I'd like to fly on my head. Now, now <laughs> Green Sun Committee. Um we had them all. Do you want me to go through it, Rick? I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had a Green Subcommittee meeting on Monday. It was Rick, myself, and Jordan. Uh, a couple of notes here. Uh, off, you know, overall, I think the golf course is in good con uh, condition. Uh, this is a really tough time of year for golf courses because of the heat, humidity, uh, it makes for ease for diseases throughout the golf course, funguses, things like that. So uh, the fairways are in good condition for the summer. Of course, tends to do well in the spring and, and later on with the cool nights and stuff like that. Um, so there are a few burnout spots, but those are sort of expected um, due to the weather. The greens are softer from the warmer nights and the humidity. Uh, they're also growing at an increased pace uh, this time of year. And again, Jordan kept emphasizing that this is just the toughest time of year for, for the golf course in, in the conditions. Uh, they use a growth regulator to help slow the greens growth, and there is a minor fungus you'll have seen on some of the greens, so they're working on resolving that. Uh, the big thing we talked about was obviously the pump station, and Randy highlighted that quite a bit. Um, at the time, there was only one pump working with 400 gallons. Now it sounds like we'll be up to 1,200 soon enough, which is great, because it was concerned that that could have an impact on the fairways and the rough. The greens themselves, though, are on a different system, and so they use a different kind of water. Um, so they would not be impacted, which was the only good news out of all of that. Uh, the next steps from the pump, and I think, Randy, you guys are quite a ways, and if I've misstated anything in here, please let me know. No, I read it. It was solid. Uh, yeah, so you got to reconnect the irrigation software so that Jordan doesn't have to go in and every night and turn it on. Uh, get pumps two and three going, which sounds like we're close, and then obviously get the electric panel, mm -hmm. electrical panel replaced. Uh, another thing I wanted to note was there's always been a request to add a second hole to Pine Green. So we, we kind of talk, we always touch base on that. I always decided to do with Jordan when I. What is it. the downside of doing that? The downside to that is uh, it's extra work for the guys. Um, and he, they're always weary about putting a second hole close to the, to the car path of the main entrance to the course because people are already used that side of the green without a hole. Yeah. Put a hole there, people are going to use it even more. Yeah. And then wear and tear will be increased on that. So I've always thought the suggestion was to put two holes on the left side farther away from the from the main entrance there so that people are forced to go over there. But I mean I mean it is a practice putting green to be yeah. used to practice putting. Yeah. More and more <laughs> courses are going away from holes. I don't know if you noticed they all play like these stakes with the little uh, knob on fun. the bottom. This, he does have one sometimes. One sometimes. There's yeah. only one of those. Yeah. And, and now there is a hole with a and I asked Dave about this today, there's a a small flag stick yeah. with a wooden yeah. flag in there, which is kind of interesting. I hadn't seen that before. He didn't know what I was meant to talking about. It. But anyway, why not have like two or three of these that stick in the ground that are easy? Yeah, it used to. I, I'd be curious what happened, and we'll have to ask yeah. about what happened to those. 
Because there used to be two or three, for sure. I mean, yeah, otherwise people are sticking. So, geez, okay. We'll ask, in the ground. Your eyes, we'll, ask, but, we'll ask Jordan on that one. What happened to those? I'll take a note to do that. Uh, moving on, trees. They currently have six new trees that are on site and ready to be planted. Uh, the goal is to put those in between holes in 11 and 12 to prevent balls from going into the opposite holes. Um, also, there's one to be removed on the on the left side of 12. I think it was about 100 yards from the green. It's dead and needs to be yeah, pulled yeah. out. Though, so, and you might put one of the six trees down there. So they're just trying to continue to rebuild the barriers between 11 and 12 because um, it's easy to get nailed if you're not careful. A couple of individual hole notes. Uh, this was kind of an interesting one. Hole one and 10. There's talk about removing the two palm trees that are 40 yards up on the left. Not the three that are in, in the tee box, but up on the left. They're about 40 yards up. The thought to remove those is it will allow them to connect the tee boxes 1 and 10 and use that whole area for teeing off on 1. So the, obviously the first tee box, as we all know, has lots of problems. It, it just gets so much wear and tear. People are trampling all over it, and that adds up. And they've tried to replant it, and they've tried to you know, put up ropes to keep you off in certain areas, but it just doesn't seem to want to come back, and it's quite a mess. So there's talk. If he pulled out those two palms, he could put it. We could put the first tee in in between one and what's one and ten. We could smooth that out, and it would just give us a lot more options. You could even use the right half of the tenth tee box and hit down one. So there's some discussion about doing that. So, so that those aren't the ones that are toward the back. No, those three that are that are in the box. Yeah. Those are going to stay. Yeah, that's the plan. Now, there was talk at one point about pulling those three out too, because then you've got one giant. But I think a lot of people feel it's an integral part of the course, kind of frames the first tee, yeah. and it just gives it a, it's a character there. Because yeah. yeah. you have to remove also the other two, because they're in the way. Yeah. So there was some discussion around that. I, I, I think it, there's, it's not imminent, but I think it's something that they they're pretty, get pretty serious about. Rick, would you say? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they need more room on the tee to let the other half heal, really. Uh, just so we're in all lines. Hole 16, we talked about adding a taller flag stick so that you can see it a little bit better from down below. It might help speed play because people don't have to block back, measure, walk forward, line up, all that stuff. Hole 17 and 18, talking about those cart paths and in need of repair. Uh, Jordan mentioned that the city may be getting involved with that. I don't know yes. if that's because. That is true. Okay. Both of those, those paths are pretty bad. 13 is bad too, it's heaving. Yeah. I know Rick didn't type this up. Because. May I interject that uh, as well? Um, there's no the the cart path on 15 is mm -hmm. also, I saw somebody get their foot stuck in a crack there and fall into the bushes. Yeah. Yeah, as you start 15. down that. The, yeah, 13 going through the Oh, through yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. There's several wide yeah. paths that are just perfect for a foot to get stuck in. Uh, yeah. Set the diversion of the wall on 17. <laughs> yes. Upcoming projects, we usually highlight some of those. At this point, most of the upcoming projects have been put on hold until the master plan process is conducted. No point in trying to do a bunch of things that then turn around and don't get uh, to be undone, so to speak, right, by a master plan. So those are kind of put on hold. Uh, plus the, the amount of maintenance that the courses had to go through, the, the staffs had to focus on that instead. A couple other notes of interest. They had new cups were installed on several holes, you might have noticed. Uh, new mats were installed at the driving range. Very nice. Uh, hopefully they'll hold up to the wear and tear that they take. Uh, talked about the driving range. Net extension needed to go back to bid uh, due to some delays in getting that uh, final processing of the previous bid. And then on a staffing perspective, there's currently 10 full-time employees. All openings have been filled, which is the first time I've heard of that since I've been on the committee. <laughs> there's no temps, uh, Jordan said. But ideally, he'd love to have three more. Randy, I'll just nudge you a little bit. Mm -hmm. He'd love to have three more employees, especially with one of them being an engineer to help work on the equipment, because they got uh, one gentleman, and he's slammed trying to get through it all and fix everything. Yeah, I'm aware of all of that. Yeah. Uh, equipment, uh, a new Sand Pro bunker rig was received just recently, so they'll be using that. Uh, there's a new rough trim mower that's been approved to be ordered, my understanding, and it's uh, going through the state CEQA for final approval. And then desired equipment, this is always pretty much the same. You know, Jordan's always looking for a new T mower, you know, a full rough mower, uh, mower trimmer for the edges and fine mowing, and then the towable chain rake to be used to break up the glass, grass clumps. I don't know if that would be better or not. Any questions on any of that? 
Then no. very comprehensive. I, I do have a question just to, uh, to understand how all this works. Um, so I showed up to the driving range the other day and beautiful new mats. So how did that happen? So I believe those are Dave Cook's owns and operates those uh, under contract with the city. Mm -hmm. So he's responsible for providing those. Now, I don't know if there's provisions in his contract that says he has to replace them at a certain, when it takes a certain amount of wear and tear, or if he's just done that out of the goodness of his heart. It was time for... Oh, yeah. It was time for them to be replaced. Yep. Okay. So, I, I need some uh, guidance here, because I, I have, uh, in observing a lot of different golf courses that I've been reviewing for the last three years with this other company I mentioned, um, Almost, well, without without fail, there's a place to put clubs for a club stand. And at our driving range, there are clubs laying on the ground, on the benches. Um, it, it looks to me like it's a liability that needs to be addressed. So I don't know how to put that into motion. The House Subcommittee, which you're now part of. <laughs> there we go. So that's going to be part of my work. Yeah, so that's something um, that you and I and Mandy can sit down and go over the contracts together and talk about contracts. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So Speaking of Mandy, how, how's our house doing? House committee? Yes. Well, we do need to sit down and talk about wage work. Um, I've actually tried to email uh, Molly a few times and I got the email came back to me. The, the change, she's changed her email. <coughs> the Wedgwood email doesn't work anymore. I noticed that myself. I, I think they have a different email. email. Um, I do have Crystal reached out to me um, yesterday actually requesting a meeting for some changes. I don't know what that means, but I'm, I'm working with them to get that scheduled. So, um, so from Robert and I's point of view, perhaps we wait to hear what you have to say, and then we can have we can set up something. Yes. We could probably it's probably a good idea for Robert and I and you to sit down and we'll do that ahead of my meeting. Of yes, them. absolutely. Yes, and go over any other things, and maybe we can set something up. Really uh, how many vendors? So we have Dave Cook's Pro Shop, we have Wedgwood, other vendors. Those are the only two contracts we have for the the pro shop area, the building. Okay. Um, there's some other con contracts within Jordan's shop, but we're not we don't oversee those. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I'll send I'll send a note out then for the three of us to try and meet maybe the next one. That's it. Sounds good. Mark, you got anything from the finance? Committee? No, I think we're we're trying to get on track of getting regular financial information while we get through the report. Maybe we'll take up those items as we move forward. Okay. Okay, anything special from the committee members starting with Ben? Uh, just knowing I, w I was been very curious as to what the status is on the master plan and, and okay. our involvement. And uh, Samantha, I don't know if that's something that we should take offline and, and you can just give. Um, I can share briefly, I, I kind of I alluded to it, there are going to be some public meetings coming up, um, public workshops. Um, there are two pathways within the master plan. One is specific to really house operations, financials, contracts, um, events and banquets, all of that. Um, THK, D D Dan Conway is our guy overseeing that portion, and then we have our golf course architect who's overseeing the actual greens and the, the architecture of the course, that's Andy Staples. Um, Andy did come out, uh, I want to say in July, somewhere around there, um, and he had the opportunity to play on the course twice. Um, one of those times um, he just went into the wild and jumped into a foursome and uh, did share that he was able to get some really interesting feedback. Um, he had somebody who I think was around 19 or 20 years old, and then somebody else who was in their 30s, and then an older gentleman as well. So he felt like he got a really good, um, diverse opinion. In general, though, he shared that people loved the course. Um, he was very impressed that our golfers also value improvements upon the course, and which he has shared is not always the case. In a lot of golf courses, people don't want to see change. Our golf community is willing and open to see changes 
for the betterment of the course. Um, so all that said, um, he's going to come up with, I believe, two different um, really new designs of the course, and that's what the committee will be able to be involved in and giving feedback on those two preliminary designs. Um, you can narrow it down from there to one and potentially ask, we, we, want, we love this, but we want to see this part included. Um, that, that gets to, I think, the really fun part of, of um, the master plan, where you get to see the physical designs um, and give feedback um, based on um, his recommendations. And, and those will be public meetings as well. Is that the September thing? I don't have a date certain. Um, I do want to make sure it's really well noticed, so I, I don't want to commit to a date that is uh -huh. too soon. Um, I, I want to make sure we, we notice publicly. We might even look to hold that at the clubhouse if that's more accessible for golfers. I do have to check with Wedgwood on that. Um, but this facility, I, I do think, is better from an AV standpoint. So um, I'm hoping to land that late September, early October. And there's that's just the first of, of probably one or two meetings. Has he had? I haven't heard of any like interviewing you know larger groups that use the course a lot. Men's club, ladies club, any of those things. He has not done any of that. Um, his, his initial plans are going to be based on observations from an architect standpoint. Um, what is best practice within golf course architects world um, and modern practices of golf course design. That's what it's based off of. Um, he has connected with Jordan, um, I think at least once I met with him and brought a list of things I have shared with him, the um, Green Subcommittee reports as of late as well, um, which again I think are reflective of what you guys are seeing on the course on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'll find out if there's an interest or a, a need to, to meet with those groups, but I think the goal is to bring everybody together um, and hear from all of the groups um, based on actual designs. Is there, sorry, one last thing, is there any opportunity for us to meet with Andy or with, with uh, Dan to um, I, I don't know. If, I, let me find out if it's even on our scope. We specifically, uh, our scope of work includes meetings with the entire committee, which have to be publicly noticed. And, and I think there's only two of those included, and then we have a council meeting included in the scope. Um, if there's an opportunity to meet via Zoom, we can. I can look to set that up. But again, I, I don't know if that's in our contract. I have to look at it. What's our general meeting for the all the committees for the city. They haven't set that date yet. That's usually in October. Did we, have one, did we have one last year? I don't think we had one last year. I don't know how we got off it. But <laughs> All right, that's, that's it for me. Okay, Mark? I think for me, just um, this gets back to the work plan. And do we usually have, like, um, yeah, certain items on certain meeting agendas. And then we have to do things, you know, we have things we want to accomplish this year. But for instance, I think in our remit, one of it is looking at the fees, and I don't think we did this over the last year. So as we're setting the work plan out, and we know we have four scheduled meetings, is it normal to, you know, look at these things and say, okay, in addition to the things that come up, here's when we're going to address these certain items in the work plan? Yeah, we, we should be following kind of a, a relatively routine cadence on our meetings. Um, the the look for, at projects and um, uh, any kind of budget stuff usually needs to happen in either November or February. Um, the city did, we switched to a, bi, a two year budget this year. Um, so we are budgeted way out until 2026 at this point. Um, but I do still think it's important that the committee annually look at projects that are a priority and if there needs to be a request for some mid-year adjustments on funding or um, whether it's equipment or projects that came up more urgently, we want to look at that. So that's November, February. Um, fees, we didn't look at this year because that's a huge part of the master plan. Um, the consultant is doing a, a lot of the heavy lifting on that. Um, which is why it wasn't looked at. But that is also looked, it can be looked at any time in the year, but we have also seen that incorporated within the budget conversation because there's an implication for budget. Yeah. And then we also want to look at the yearly calendar, and that is supposed to happen in November as well. Okay. Um, so there are, there's pretty somewhat routine items. It would be good, I think, to get 
things on the calendar earlier just to be able to prepare. So I think a lot of times the agenda comes out right on top of the meeting. So and that's, we'll do our best, but that is absolutely common practice um, for these types of meetings, whether they're, they're quarterly, they're weekly, they're every other week. Um, we are under requirement for noticing, so we, we'll try to get the agendas out earlier, I'll be honest with you. Um, it's Debbie and I doing yeah. the agendas, and there's a, a right. bit of an admin. I guess maybe just a comment to the fellow committee members when we're putting our work plan requests in. Maybe we think about when to do those things so we can ourselves have time to prepare, knowing, for instance, that a fee discussion is coming up in the January meeting or something. Yeah, you could, as part of your work plan, seek that, you know, we're going to talk about this item at this meeting. Um, you could add that into your work Just plan. On, on that particular subject, because that is one of the things that, that we do usually look at in the House Committee. Um, are you suggesting we leave that for the master plan and not focus on it ourselves? Right That's now? correct. I, that will be part of the because master plan. Normally we would have asked um, the city to look into what, what's everyone else's fees and then we'd have a discussion and then we would bring it to the the, the committee here, Got but it. we haven't done that, and I think that's why. Yes. So, Mark, your your question, yes, you can attach time frames to your yeah. items. That's totally fine. That's it for me. Maybe. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm going to put my way things down on my side. Robert, can you speak your piece? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I was concerned that um, maybe we're um, overlapping our efforts with the master plan, but based on what I've heard, it sounds like the master plan is going to be presented and all interested parties will have an opportunity to look at it and comment about it. So what we would like to be involved in understanding how that is, I think we have that opportunity. So I feel more comfortable at that point, at this point. Um, that we'll have an opportunity to uh, take a look at it. And I just hope it's not too late. Sorry to cut you off. You know, yeah, they've yeah. already gone so far down a road that to, to then get some input, not necessarily on what they've already produced, but just general questions. Well, you know, I hate it for it to be that they've gone down a long road and, you know, I don't know. Maybe, I, mean, maybe I'm I was going to say that if we're putting forward our suggestions for our plan, um, in the next, when do you want that by, by the way, um, Samantha, our suggestions for the work plan? Within a couple of weeks? Um, I'm going to need it by, let's set a date of September 6th, so if you can get me your items, that's about a week and a half out next Friday. So I, I, I agree with you, Ben, that um, maybe some of these are, are, some of the decisions that have more than likely already been made yeah. have been without in, input from the golf course committee. I, I think you, you, you're you crossing a line when you say there's decisions that have been made. Well, there, there are no decisions that have been made. Everything that you're going to see are proposals. Um, they're recommendations based on the architect's usage of the course and his. he has some associates that have also been out on the course. So this is a very normal master plan process. Um, the, the professional, the consultant, is going to take the lead, jump in based on their expertise, and say this is what our recommendations are. They're going to then come back and say here's what we have. You as the users, tell us if this is going to work. If it's not, then we can change it based on your guys' usage. This is a very common practice in how master plans, whether it's a golf course or a park, this is how it happens. Um, so there, I want to assure the committee that there are no decisions made. Staff have not said, yes, that's the one we want. Yes, you need to do that. That is not, those conversations haven't happened. Um, so you are, we're not late. We're not behind. We are right on schedule with timing. Um, I know that there are probably some anxiety leading up to it, like when are we going to see something. Um, these plans take time. This master plan is expected to take 9 to 12 months. It was always intended to do that. Um, and our parks plans are no different from that as well. So I want you guys to rest assured that 
the process is being followed um, and we're not going to cut corners. If the committee hates it all, we will start over. That's okay. Um, but we have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and that's always based on his first recommendation. And you'll see that when, when it rolls out. I do like the, the comment you made about the best practices for modern golf course design because this course was just designed quite a while ago and um, some of the length um, issues the, or the lack of the variety of length of tee boxes and, and I'm sure they're looking at that because that's modern golf course. Yeah, they're, they're looking at that. He's also um, very sensitive to the uh, William Bell design of the course as well. So there's several factors he's looking at. He also has the entire historical layout of the course when there were holes in different places, when the driving range was somewhere else. He's got all of that information. So he's seen where we've been um, and knows that this is a very important course to the city as well. That's all I have. Thanks. All right. <laughs> I don't have anything, but I am entertaining a motion to adjourn until next November the 7th. Any motions? Second. Yeah. Well, I think we're not going to have another meeting in the month. Yeah. We have our special one to go to. Yeah, yeah. You, you can go ahead and adjourn to the regular, and then we will post the special once we know. Okay, it's been moved and seconded, and we're all in favor. Adjourn. <laughs>